So in this lesson we are going to look at signal flow or the signal path. And what that basically means is that when we have an audio signal, it passes through our chain of plugins and effects and through the mixer and then ends up coming out at the master output. And everything from the source of the sound, which might be your audio stem, to the output is the signal path. And the way that we set up the signal flow can have huge differences to the end result. So for instance, if you put a reverb plugin before a compressor, that has a very different effect than if you put the reverb plugin after the compressor. And I'll show you an example of this in a couple of minutes, so it's going to be a lot clearer if I'm not explaining it properly. Now with this in mind, there is a standard signal flow that you should try to use, and this will give you the greatest amount of control over your mix. So here it is. The first plugin that you would put in your chain would almost always be a reductive EQ. Now it might be a gain plugin, and I'll explain why in the next lesson, which will be gain staging. But for now, let's just say it's going to be an equalizer. And what you would do is you would use that as a reductive EQ, so you take out the unwanted frequencies. The second effect that you might put on, and remember you don't have to put any of these effects on if it sounds good already, would be an effect of some sort like perhaps a saturator or a distortion unit. We don't want to be applying effects to the completely unwanted frequencies, which is why we did the reductive EQ first. Okay, so you've applied your next effect. For argument's sake, let's say it was saturation. Next, we'll put another EQ after that, and then we will again cut out any unwanted frequencies that the effects unit has added. After that, we can add some compression if needs be. And then after compression, we can use another EQ to then boost the frequencies that we want to boost. Now, the reason we don't do this before the compression stage is because if we boost the frequencies before we compress the signal, the compressor is just going to squash them all back down again. OK, so by this stage, we should more or less have our signal sounding good within the frequency dimension. So now we could dial in some reverb or delay, which we've set up on send or auxiliary channels. And again, I'll show you this in a couple of minutes. But what it basically means is that the reverb or the delay is on its very own channel. So rather than applying it directly to the channel that our sound is on, we can dial in less or more of the send effect as required. And there are two very good reasons for doing that. One, we can have more control over the send effects than we could if it was on our main signal path. For instance, we could equalize it differently from how we'd equalize the dry signal. And also we can dial in some of the same reverb or delay with many of the different instruments. And that is what helps make them all sound like they're coming from the same space. And the third bonus reason is that it takes up a lot less CPU power. So just imagine you've got 10 different instruments playing in your mix. If you've got a different reverb on each of those instruments, the chances are it's going to sound really muddy and washed out and it's going to take a lot more CPU power. We can then route the signal either directly to the output bus, which is the main master output, or we can send it to a different bus or group. Now throughout this module, we're going to go in depth as to why these different routing options can be so powerful. So if you're not quite seeing it yet, I guarantee you will be within a few lessons time. But for now, I'll give a quick example of this signal flow in our mix live in Ableton. So first I'll show you that example of having the compressor before the reverb or the compressor after the reverb. So here's our uncompressed signal. Let's put a compressor on it. Make it more sausage-like and up front and in your face. Now let's add the reverb afterwards. So you can hear the reverb just dies away as normal but, and it's being applied to the compressed signal. But let's switch it around and put the compressor after the reverb and hear the difference. And back. So 
So you can hear there's a big difference and that is because as I said when the compressor is after the reverb the tail of the reverb is also being compressed so the signal is being compressed down to the lowest level that we've set the ratio and the threshold to and then the makeup gain is bringing the whole signal up so the reverb tails sound really loud and then they get squashed when the signal sounds again. So now let's go through this recommended signal flow and we'll do it with the vocals and I'll take you through each step and I'll explain why I'm doing it. So first we will add a EQ and take out the frequencies that we don't want. So this is, to be free. we can Got see there are some bass frequencies down Got here in the vocals, they pop up now and again family. and we don't need Got those. To be free. Got so we use a high pass filter. And we have cut out the unwanted frequencies from the low end there. Next we will add our effect which we are going to use as saturation. And that's just to add some more frequencies and make it a bit fatter. And you'll see I've actually added a gain plugin and taken that down to compensate for the extra volume that the saturation plugin adds. And we will go through this in detail in the gain staging lesson, which is next. And I'll explain exactly why I've done that. But in a nutshell, it's to bring the volume back down to what it was before the saturation has been applied. To be free. Next EQ to take out the unwanted frequencies that the saturation has added. So let's open that up, turn it on take this off. Let's see what's going on. To be free. So you can see the Got saturation has added free. all these sub frequencies Got again which we don't want. So again I'm going to high pass, to roll free. off the low end, get rid Got of them. Next we're going to add some compression, just some light compression to take down the loudest parts of her singing and make it more manageable volume wise. So we don't have any really loud peaks and really quiet bits. To be free. Now I've got some really good tips for compressing vocals that I'll show you later on in the course, but for now let's just use this one compressor. To be free, got to be free. And then we will add some additive EQ to bring out those high frequencies and just make sure that all of that low end information that we don't want has been taken out again. To be free, got to be free, got to come together as one family. So you can hear we're just adding that frequency there at the top end to make it cut through and have some air in the mix. So next is to use the send controls which will be slightly different in each door but the concept is exactly the same. So we've got two reverbs set up on our auxiliary channels that these send knobs send the signals to. We've got a short reverb and we've got a secondary longer reverb and the short reverb is to give presence which is to make the sound sit in a particular space and the long reverb dictates the size of the space. And again we'll go into this in more detail later but this lesson is just about the signal routing so let's concentrate on that. To be free, got to be free, got to come together as one family. Turn them off. And with them on. And you can see that now we've got the reverb on their own channels, we can process them differently from how we're processing the dry vocals. So we've got a lot more control over these different reverb effects. And as I said, the beauty is we can now send other instruments to these same send channels to make everything sound a bit more cohesive and in the same space. So let's try it with the backing vocals, shall we? To be free, got to be free, got to come we'll just together. dial in some That's reverb. Family, we got to share the love, got to be free, got to come together as one family. Without the same channels on. And with them on. Yeah. 
So we've added our send effects and the vocal channel is currently going straight to the master output. But there are a few more options here and we'll go into some of them later on in this module. Now the next lesson is a really quick one on gain staging because although it doesn't sound very sexy, it's incredibly important and so often overlooked. And then we will get into the really interesting stuff like parallel compression and all the different kind of sidechain compression options that are available, how to use them and why we would choose to use them. But for the time being, let's keep things simple and just refer to this signal flow diagram to have an idea about how to set your plugins up and in which order and I will see you in the gain staging lesson.